In this video, I'm going to be going over how to get your Black Miner FPGA set up and controllable from within HiveOS. Oh, Black Miner uh, is a FPGA unit that is built by and sold by Hash Altcoin. At least it was back in 2020, I believe. That's when I got I think I got mine in 2021. I've had the F1 Mini and also the F1 Mini Plus. They also have an F1, F1 Ultra, an F2, and then also a daisy chain version of the F1 Mini Plus. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to get the Hive on ASIC firmware installed on it so that we can control it and monitor it from within our Hive OS dashboard. In order to do that, first I just want to show you the kind of dashboard for the Black Miner FPGA. You want to make sure everything's functioning first. <clears throat> so if we just hop over to that dashboard, you can see it's currently mining Tribus on Zerg. Uh, but if we go over to Pool Miner, we have already have all of our bitstreams loaded onto the unit. <clears throat> and all of these will work within HiveOS. And you'll be able to control all these via flight sheet. So once that is there, first thing we want to do is we want to jump over to the GitHub for Hive OS ASIC. <clears throat> and I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to click on other models, scroll down to the Black Miner F1 series by Hash Altcoin Technologies. And this is the command we want to run. We're going to copy this command. Now what we need to do is we need to get our farm hash. So to do that, we got to run over to Hive on our main screen when we're on our farm. Go to settings and copy our farm hash. And we're going to paste that in here. All right. Now we have this full command we need to run. We want to remote into our black miner. Easiest way to do it is just to remote into it uh, via SSH using putty. I've already remoted into it uh, using username root password. Root is the default password. And all we got to do is just copy this entire command and run it and it's going to download and install the package you can see it already detected that i have black miner f1 mini so it's already detected the right system <clears throat> all right and we can see it's also has auto added uh, this machine to my farm and it's sending the up command now. And there we go. It's saying to start mining, you just have to apply a flight sheet, flight sheet. So perfect. So now if we jump back over to our farm, we can see we now have our ASIC here and it's showing as a F1M, which is F1 mini. So perfect. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it and I'm just going to call it F1 Mini Update Worker. <clears throat> and now we'll want to create our flight sheets. You can already, you can see I already have a handful of uh, ASIC flight sheets here. Uh, but what we'll do for the purposes of this video is we'll go ahead and create a new one. So to keep things basic, uh, let's just use, uh, we'll use Zergpool. That'll be the easiest. So we'll get back to our main screen. And we've already got our Zerg wallet set up. If you don't, just go ahead and add your wallet. And then we're going to head over to Flight Sheets. We're going to create a flight sheet. And this is going to be slightly different than your typical flight sheet. Uh, so just to start off, let's do, we'll do Zerg Tribus. 
and we've got our wallet. We're going to configure that because they don't have an endpoint for it. Our miner is always going to be ASIC miner. Even though it's an FPGA, it's going to be ASIC miner. We need to head over to Zerg and grab the stratum. I'm in North America, so I'm going to use North America stratum for the Tribus algorithm. We're going to go ahead and copy this one. Do setup miner config in our pool URL. We're going to put that in. For our wallet, because we are using Zerg, I'm just going to plug in my Flux wallet. Uh, we'll do C flux ID equals and we can do percent worker name here to grab the worker name uh, This is optional. You don't have to do this for Zerg. You do have to define the coin that you're being paid out in And you just want wallet here You just want percent WAL percent that'll grab the wallet Now the important part is the extra configs. These are required for the uh, F1 FPGAs. So in order to set these and really see what you need to set, we're gonna refer to the bitstream config files. And essentially whatever's in the bitstream config file we can overwrite here. So the two main arguments you're always gonna want are coin type, and also, you're going to want frequency. Oops. Guessing once I have values in those, those will be okay. Yeah. All right. So let's jump back over. Uh, I am connected via WinSCP to the FPGA and I'm going to move up two folders to the uh, essentially the drive root and I already have all of mine on an SD card if you don't have an SD card with loaded up with bitstreams then they'll probably be in the FPGA bit folder but as you can see I only got a couple there pretty much all of mine are in the SD card folder and so what we're looking for are these conf files. So if I pull up one as an example, we'll just go ahead and pull up the Tribus one because that's the one we're working with right now. And if we open this, what we see is coin type needs to be Tribus and our default frequency is 490. Now you can adjust this frequency if you want to overclock the unit. So we just do Tribus here, we do 490 here, and whenever you apply the flight sheet, it will apply both those arguments. And again, it will overclock. The one thing with the overclocking, make sure you hop over to frequency, and if you notice, this is increments of two. So don't do 491M for 491 megahertz, do 492 or 494. So if we do this, we hit apply changes, and I'm just going to name this uh, F1 Mini Travis. Great flight sheet. Now, if we hop over to that worker that we created, over to flight sheet, and we launch that flight sheet. What this will do is this will apply those settings. And then it will reboot the miner, the actual FPGA mining software, which uses CG miner. And then it'll start hashing. And we should be able to see the hash rate once it comes back up. So here we can see the rig config change. It restarted the miner. I'm just giving a minute. There we go. We can see it's back up. Right now it's at 10 mega hash. That should, that should increase pretty quickly here.
There we go. So we're at 102 mega hash right now on the Tribus algorithm. And we can clear that out. And here we can see we're getting accepted chairs. And if we want to hop back over to the Black Miner dashboard, we can see everything is hashing right. Uh, so we should be at about 209 now. 187, it's, it's fluctuating. It'll catch up on the hive side. It'll be slightly delayed. Uh, but that's really it. We can see we've got four accepted chairs here. We've got four here. So everything is good. Now the one thing I would advise is not to change any settings within the Black Miner dashboard. Like if you want to change the frequency, if you want to change any of that, change it in the flight sheet, apply it, and let it copy back over. Uh, that'll save you uh, a lot of hassle. And make sure you don't forget to include the frequency. If you don't include frequency and you change algorithms, it'll stay on the old frequency. It will not default to whatever's on your FPGA inside the... Uh, CG minor config files. So it's always going to use whatever you send it. And if you don't send it anything, it's going to keep whatever the previous algorithm had. So as an example, we can see Tribus is 490. However, if we look at something like Kadena, Kadena is 514. Right, so that one probably wouldn't be too bad. It would probably still hash at a slower rate. But then if we pull up something like CKB, uh, CKB is 420. Let me pull up. Uh, layer 2, maybe. Yeah, so something like uh, Layer 2 Rev2, which would be like Verge. If you're mining Verge and you didn't specify frequency, the system can only really hash at 234 megahertz, but you would have been telling it to continue to hash at 490. You're not going to get any shares. The, the miner's just going to crash until you start passing that in. So just caveat that whenever you're sending it in, make sure you send in the arguments all the time to prevent any type of potential crashes. Uh, but that's really it. These should really should be the only two arguments you have to pass in. Uh, the URL username password will always get overwritten based on the config data. And then the coin type and the frequency will get overwritten based on what you define in there. Uh, but that's it. Thank you for watching. Drop me a comment below. Let me know if you're mining with any FPGAs. Uh, there are some projects going on that are trying to reverse engineer uh, the hardware so that we can actually build some bit streams, some modern bit streams for the existing FPGAs that used to be closed source.